I get this behind here without with hiding it? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, strawberry. So we're here in uh, King's Cross doing another Steve Best shoots. So there's an amazing venue and we're just setting up for Alexandra Haddo, comedian. Very funny, very, very funny. How tall is she? Oh, yep, yep, yep. Ah! <laughs> ah! Alexandra Haddo! Hi Steve! How See are you doing? You. Come in, come Thanks in. Thanks for having me. This is my living room. Oh, it's lovely. These are my new glasses. What do you think? See, I, yeah, great. Right. I read that you did an advertising campaign. Oh yeah, for Cubit. Yeah, yes. Yes, are they Cubit? They are. Nice. What did you write for them? I did. It was actually quite a difficult brief. It was um, the setup to a joke had to be 30 letters or less because oh. it was to look like an eye test. Do you remember the joke? I think it was something about a spider um, having eight eyes. What a great idea. Yeah, and the punchline could be as, as long as you want, but you, but you want that the other way around as a joke. Do yeah, they, do they it, use yeah. it? Do they use it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I've, got the, I've got the flyers. When I put them on, and I just thought they, they were going to start laughing at me. No, no, just they look it. really cool. And they go with the whole outfit as they well. They do, yeah. Yeah. Right, we're going to shoot you. <laughs> we're going to shoot Alexandra Haddo. Hang on a sec, let me just get the light to make sure that works. Picture of, the pictures of me that you took at Elon Comedy Festival are my favourite photos ever. I printed one out for you <gasps> to have give you? to you. Plus you're in the, my book. I know, a lot of my friends have pre-ordered that. So that's nice, you look great. The green, with the green curtains. Yeah, um, thanks. Do you like having your picture taken? Yeah, I do that? actually. Do I you? feel like I'm the only person that does. I was a picture editor for years at magazines. Seriously? So I was doing shoots a lot. I didn't used to be a photographer, but I used to do like street style and things Really? Like that. So I'm interested in photography. Did you get yourself cameraed up and everything or you Yeah, I had a had a nick on. Yeah. Shot my mates a couple of times when I was really young. Look back on them now and, and cringe. But, but I do that with my that's good. I mean I started out as a stand up. I feel like you're winging it anyway, don't you? Yeah. I oh mean, definitely. Eating in stand up to some extent. Hundred percent. I was like, yeah. I can't believe people are paying me to tell jokes. Well yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm trying not to talk as you like, as you shoot. No, you could do that. You could do that. You just I, I, I get blinky shots and it doesn't matter. I don't, they don't go in the yeah, final yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I worked for like Vogue, Evening Standard magazine. I still work for a bit. Like Marie Claire, Look, Grazia. Yeah. What was the transition? Because usually, don't give up your day job, isn't it? So yeah. I think the, the comedy circuit has changed since when I was doing it 20 odd years ago. Where yeah. You can make a really good living doing the circuit and then the, the, the aspiration was to give up your day job yeah but now you know I shot Terry Alderson the other day he said his advice is to keep your job because then yeah yeah there's not as much stress and pressure on just doing stand -up. yeah yeah I like to keep my hand in it but yeah. I don't the odd few days that come up are the perfect amount really yeah. but you're touring now as well aren't you? yeah yeah doing like a, a mini first mini tour which is exciting and nerve-wracking I never dress up on stage but I dress smart this is why I dressed nice for the shoots. So how do you dress on stage? I, dr I would dress in like a t-shirt, jeans and boots and right. always hair and makeup done. Smart, but yeah. it's never too feminine. Right. I feel like I get a different reaction right. if I dress too feminine. Because I'm quite low status and because I'm telling self-deprecating stories, if you go on looking incredible and high fashion, I think there's a dissonant. Peter People are sort of looking at you being like, what? Well, they don't believe. They yeah. wouldn't believe you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Sometimes I do wish that I was high status, just so I could wear all the stuff I own. I, I don't feel high status, if you know what I mean. Is that from your your upbringing, your who you are? Do, I mean. Yeah, and I think there's just it's funny because I've got a boyfriend now, but a lot of my comedy was about not necessarily being single, but just kind of um, things that genuinely happened to me, and you know, bad dates, weird relationships, things yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. So now there's a new challenge just to kind of look at a relationship in a different way you know yes it's difficult when something's gone well in your life as a comedian because as soon as something weird happens to you or bad happens to you as a comedian you're like that's a new 10 yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, a, it's a probably an unhealthy way to be but it's good for the job yeah, yeah. But that's funny isn't it because uh, that, that's the way comedians think isn't it yeah we, we changed the show this is the <laughs> best shoot at the psychiatrist chair <laughs> but we have to come to this venue each time it's a great pictures yeah. <laughs> also they just the coloring i mean you've, you've uh, i can actually take a close-up of your face here yeah. rather than uh, there we go so that's our time for today it's 30 <laughs> minutes you've had I and feel it's great. Five hundred pounds. <laughs> Comedians rates four pound eighty. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or not at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't a model shot shoot, by the way. This is <laughs> this is a comedian's chat. Um, best gig. 
best gig, yeah. the one that always springs to mind, I'm not just saying this because you took some nice photos of me at it, was uh, Ealing Comedy Festival. Yeah. I think it was July 2022. I was doing headliners with, with Simon. So he was talking to one of his people that he works with and he was like, yeah, we've got Dylan. We've got Dylan for the for Ealing Comedy Festival. And I went, oh, Dylan Moran. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I, d I think, I don't know if I'm going to have a compare or something like that. I, I said, no, 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 I'm not hinting at that. I just, I'll, I'll buy a ticket, you know, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not hinting. I said, but oh God, I'd love to be on a bill with Dylan Moran. Like he's my absolute hero. And Simon, you know, the loveliest man in the world just called me up a week later and he was like, do you want to compare it? And I was like, yes, please. <laughs> but you were actually, I'm not blowing smoke up, but you were, you were fantastic. Oh, and I thank think you. I was very nervous. It was it's, massive, it's, it's big, difficult. isn't it? It's about 1,100 people, yeah. I think. I usually photograph from the wings, yeah. often, often. So the, the, there's some really nice light on there. So uh, there's a picture of you, I think your arm's out, and your arm's nearly invisible, I think, because the light's just shining through. Yeah. And there's another one where you fist bump Neil, De Neil Delamere. Delamere. Yeah. It was just after COVID, wasn't it? So, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's still a bit kind of, just the action of fist bumping, it's great. It was honestly amazing. I don't know if you remember this, but, um, so my friend Roddy was in the crowd. So I had said to Roddy, when I bring Dylan on, and I'm obviously going to shake his hand, try and get a photo of that, because there'll be a picture of me and Dylan Moran on stage right. together. And we were going out for the final section. Are we gonna, do you want to have a quick Why would they think that? I believe they're thinking that they can put music on. So we got that. We had someone downstairs banging out. That was yeah. good tunes, though. <laughs> they were good tunes, but it's quite hard when it's you're trying. Early, I think. It's a bit yeah. early, so I don't know if I've got a picture of you with Dylan. Yeah, so I had my friend in the audience, I said, when I bring him on, and that's going to be a picture of, of me on stage at this, you know, massive, incredible gig, shaking hands with one of my heroes, kind of thing, and Roddy was like, in the audience, he was like, prepped, ready. And then so I came on and I was like, ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe I'm introducing this guy, please welcome Dylan Moran. And then I sort of like went to walk off, got off stage, nothing. And I thought, uh, I don't know what's like going on. I just, he was just there when I'd gone on. And then I turned around to have to go back on stage. I thought, I'm going to have to fill. I'm going to have to like d do some jokes. You like, thought you were still in the dressing room or something? Just as I was sort of climbing the stage, the stairs to go back on stage, he kind of came through like a sort of <laughs> crack in the tent and like ran on. I never got my picture with Dylan Lawrence. Well, I, I remember, but, yeah, he's, he's a funny guy, Dylan. Is yeah. it? So I was going to say who your kind of inspirations or heroes from the comedy world? You... Dylan Moran, um, Bill Bailey, and yeah. I got to do an open for a little secret show of, with him at Always Be Comedy recently, so that was mad. Yeah. Billy Connolly, obviously, he's got a big Scottish family. So if you look straight into the camera, I'm just going to get yeah. your eyes in focus, and we'll do some proper... Do you nice, smiley. Do you smile? <laughs> yes, yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> This is great, loving it, loving it. Um, music wise, are you into what music are you into? I run an indie club night called Indie Amnesty, so I love indie Britpop, rock and roll. Rock love, and roll? Yeah, I love boys with guitars. Yeah. You know? I mean, I do like everything, yeah. but that's, I got frustrated that I never got to go to a good indie night in London. Do you play music? Are you? No, I think that's where it comes from. I can't, I've tried to learn guitar a few times. I think being a comedian is the closest thing I'm going to get to being in a band, you know? <laughs> But you are massively into music and you run a night. I DJ, yeah, with my boyfriend's an actual musician and a DJ. An actual musician. An actual musician. Yeah. So I was supposed to put this night on as a one-off in April 2020. Really had a craving for an indie night and it sold out immediately. I want to keep it so that it's people will look forward to it. So I do it every every few months. Oh, okay. Let's do some straight on headshots. Yeah. Um, I um Sorry, do you want me to talk or should I just... That's all right, you've got to laugh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. Oh, that's nice. Oh, your, your photos are so nice, honestly. Did you get that on tape? <laughs> is that what they say, tape? Is that the technical They're so term? good. It's an actual tape, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Worst gig? Can I say, can you... Oh, you yeah. Worst gig was at the Fringe last year. I was booked to compare Best of the Fest midday. Yeah. And they said, oh, it's a clean set. I said, yeah, no worries. I said, how clean are we talking? And they said, oh, nothing graphically sexual and no really bad swearing. So if, you know, shit slips out, it's not the worst thing in the world. I went, oh, okay. Shit slips out. If shit yeah, slips yeah, out, I mean, that yeah. would be quite yeah, bad. That'd yeah. be a worst gig, wouldn't it? Visual, very Shut visual. Shut myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, that's not too bad. Anyway, I went, I went on, I was comparing, which I do all the time. Couldn't get anything back. Like, I was getting nothing. I was dying on my ass. Full audience. And there was no kids in, right? Because the kids in Scotland had already gone back. There was about 250, 300 people. And I was looking around, there was no kids whatsoever. Died 
on my ass for the first bit. I went on again, they hated me. I thought, do you know what? Maybe they think I'm being patronising because it is a whole room of adults, right? So I thought, I did a joke about circumcision, which is not graphically sexual. No. One liner, nothing graphic, no swearing in it. And they went, <gasps> oh, ah. like that. And then I came back, the showrunner, I saw my name on their laptop and it was like, Alex Haddo made a joke about circumcision, which was flagged to me by one of the other staff members. I was like, you bunch of grasses. Oh, that's terrible. So I came off and I was just like, sorry, I've died. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, my new boyfriend looks great without his top on. And you know, they sort of went, woo. And I said, by which I mean he's circumcised. Which is lovely. Oh, uh, they did, they did not like they it. Of course you. I got a my, my circumcision joke is, uh, my mum's French, my dad's Jewish. I was circumflexed. <laughs> so. We often do um, a, a, a dark room place where people go a little bit dark. But you, you, you haven't really got anything, have you? Got yeah, I used to have really bad hypochondria. And it would be things like I'd like do little bargains with myself all the time. Like, oh, if um, that car manages to go past before the end of the song I'm listening to, then I haven't got this illness or whatever. And I realised now it was actually a form of OCD, which kind of presented itself in hypochondria. But you never saw you never saw someone about it and said, you know, what's going on? No, it, it because it was almost like, well, classic revelation. comedian thing. I used to joke about hypochondria all the time. Hypochondria is, I think, thought, thought of as quite a funny... Barry Cry used to do a joke about, I've, I've got hypochondria, or so my gynaecologist tells me. <laughs> which is such a lovely joke. Oh, that's brilliant. But, you know. And I genuinely have been, been fine for years. And generally, I'm very lucky. Like, my mental health has, yeah. has been pretty good. I mean, I'm fairly sure... I've got ADHD, but so so is every comedian, I think. But I can sort of cope with it, I think. I, I know that a big um, symptom of ADHD is apparently bad sleep. I could sleep now if I wanted to. Like, is that from it, boring? Is that boring? Is that boring? Yeah. Is that, is that boring? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, just, a, just a, like, an art house film of me asleep, just while Steve takes photos. I could sleep anywhere apart from on a plane, because I've got a bit of a nervous flyer. Oh, yeah. I bet it's the one place you wish you could sleep. The one place where I look around at my friends and I think, Fuck you, when they're just like, you know, before the plane takes off and I'm like poised and oh, ready totally. in case anything ha What My thinking, I think, is if anything happens, I'm awake and ready to deal with it. Okay. Frankie Boyle won't fly. He's Seriously? terrified. Oh, you've you've with Frankie Boyle? Yeah, you? I supported him. Proper big Who's one. a proper hero of mine as well. Yeah. And I did, yeah, did all his London dates. He, he thought he was a, an anxious person and he realised it was always just like the thought of the upcoming flight. Seriously? But now that he knows that he doesn't have to do it, He's much more relaxed. What, just generally? Yeah. yeah. I'm actually not too bad if it is a smooth flight, but if there's like literally one bump, I'm, oh, I'm man, gone. I'm the same. Yeah. It? We're on, I think it was Virgin, and, and the wings, I, you, they were just flapping. Don't look. There's some kind of reassurance thinking, they're bendy wings, that's fine. Yeah. But even so, it's bumping like that. Yeah. And the thing that pilots tell you, isn't there, is that technically the, winds, the wings could touch yeah, and yeah. they'd be fine. Nice one. And you're like, if I saw that, I'd be dead before it hit the ground out of fear. <laughs> <laughs> So arms behind your back. Yeah. Lean into me a bit. Okay. Just doing a few headshots. Do you want to become famous, Alexander? Fame isn't the objective at all. No. Um, but some perks of fame would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> bit of financial security, maybe some free clothes, you know? <laughs> free Nando's or Greg's. That'd be nice. But yeah, I don't think I'd want um, intrusion into my life or anything like that. You know, you're on stage in front of two, three hundred people. Yeah, yeah. And you just, you know, your character on this big and then you come off stage and you don't really want to speak to I don't. So want to come up and, and say, here's a joke and all that, oh, all God, that stuff. Oh, God, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's really nice, you know, if someone just wants to say, oh, I really enjoyed that, I like that. Yeah. But it, yeah, it's often people somewhere. giving you a tip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me just do a long shot of you and then... Um, People giving you a tip and you're like, oh, all right. oh, cheers, mate. Yeah, 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 thanks. Yeah, yeah, that's so... You can use that in one of your skits. Oh, that is such a good one. Oh, my, my, yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks. Or the classic, you want to get on that live at the Apollo. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> Mad that. Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just... That's not, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you ever, are you offended by anything? No, that's the wrong phrase, I always think. Maybe. This thing about offence where people are like, oh, I was offended by that. I've never been offended by something. I've thought that was a shit joke because yes. you're punching down. Your audience is your litmus test every time. Yeah. But then you get people like, you know, big comedians that have con kind of gone down that, that route of just trying to be offensive. And I think as soon as you try and go for the shock above the laugh, that's when you become shit. And I also think that 
most comedy fans especially, they can see that what you're doing is actually trying to antagonise people. You're not trying to make them laugh. And that's I mean, not me being on my high horse. I think you can joke about whatever you want if you do it in the right way. And you've, you've lost your authority for me because you're doing this to try and be like, oh, look, I'm a naughty little, do you know what I mean? Like a naughty little schoolboy kind yeah. of thing. If it's funny enough to overcome that, you can do it. Uh, it's been a really fantastic. You've been fantastic. Thank We've you all so got much some great stuff there. Um, Steve Best Shoots. Next episode, Alex Haddo. Alexandra Haddo. Alex Haddo. <laughs> One of them. Both. Either. All. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.